please. How do you spell that? N A M G I S. No peace. Morning, everyone. <laughs> I'll uh, apologize for my voice for the singing while we get a hot lap similar to uh, exercise in the culture of our people. You know, the Union of I'm the Vice President of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, Chief Bob Chamberlain, Kirk Mosetti, New York, the First Nation. I think the issue that British Columbians need to become aware of is there are two items here. One, is the incredible stand of our people and our protesters and opposition to open that cage fish park. The second is the fact that Marine Harvest has now made the decision to pursue a strategic law lawsuit against public protest. Now this is something that should trouble every British Columbian and every Canadian. Because what we have is an industry now using the court system which is supposed to be able to deal out justice for all Canadians. They're using this to limit public protest. To bully They're using us. this to be bullies from the corporate world into the Canadian citizenship and those of First Nations. And this is utterly unacceptable. We've witnessed this in Sightseeing Dam. We've witnessed, witnessed this in Kinder Morgan. And so here we are. And the very fact that Green Harvest has named John and Jane Doe it tells you very clearly of their intention to make sure that there is no opportunity for peaceful, public <clears throat> protest. And so they are attempting now to muzzle the opinion of Canadians. And we are standing here today to say that this is utterly unacceptable and that we have never lost sight of the value of wild salmon to our people. <laughs> There is another event this weekend that I think British Columbians need to understand. There was a peaceful fundraiser held on Quadra Island, British Columbia this weekend. And I have picture of the RCMP showing up with a video camera and recording the event of a peaceful fundraiser for public protest. I do not see any reason at all by the RCMP, who are here to look after the justice of Canada, <clears throat> would see it as a priority to attend a fundraiser to capture facial images of those of us that stand in opposition to fish farms. This is not good use of public money. Yes. I'll say. And for myself, it calls into question the impartiality of the RCMP in regards to peaceful public protest. We saw over the weekend reports of razor wire being put down at the, where Kinder Morgan's destination is. Is this the state of Canada now? Are we going to see razor wire at every fish farm? And if we are, this is an extremely sad comment on where Canada is as a country. <clears throat> that with open arms embraced the federal government's embracing of the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. We stand here calling on the government to implement it as they committed before the election and afterwards. And we have here an opportunity where the provincial government has also followed suit and that they have embraced the UN Declaration and they have made the commitment to British Columbians to implement this important human rights declaration. Today, we are within one year of the renewal of virtually all the fish farm tenders in our people's territory. <clears throat> I call on Premier Horgan, Minister Fraser, Minister Popham to make this issue a priority, to make this issue the first out the door of free, prior and informed consent which is the promise of the UN Declaration. We are now confirming the follow-up meeting with Premier Horgan and his ministers. And we will be putting in front of this government that we fully expect the round of engagement for the renewal of these tenures to be one of consent-based decision-making. 
No more consultation and accommodation. That's, right. That's yesterday's news. Right. Today it's the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Right. And the stand that we take, our young warriors that are out there facing aggressive tactics of this company, we stand to look after our territory. We stand to look after the birthright of our people. And in doing so, we are standing for every British Columbian that has had the opportunity to catch a wild salmon in the waters of British Columbia. And what we want is we want every British Columbian to have that very same opportunity to catch a wild salmon with their grandchildren. Nothing short of that. And so that we can ensure if we have to turn to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans next, because they are failing in their obligations of the precautionary principle of the fundamental law of this country for them to look after the environment. And they are failing. And so we stand here today. And now I have the great honor of having two of our women warriors standing with me, as these are the young ladies that have taken it upon themselves to stand for our people. All First Nations people know the true strength of our nation is with our women. There's no question. And these young ladies are demonstrating that every day and have been for quite a long time. And this company has decided that these two young women's conduct needs to be brought in front of the courts of this province. This is something that all British Columbians should be concerned about. The misuse of justice. Where is the justice when the government breaks its own laws? Where is the justice when the companies break the laws and regulations of this industry, which are horribly weak and need to be moved to land-based closed containment? Now I will step aside and let our warriors speak as needs to be heard by all British Columbians. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming out here and be willing to support against such a huge industry that gets its fingers in so many pies. They have a truly devastating effect on our land and water. And they deny that at every turn. We've been at this for three months now, 80 days. 80 days we've been at this. recent step to protect our lands and waters. Before that, we've been saying no to this industry for 30 years. That's right. hey, this has been taking too long. Our wild salmon cannot wait another 30 years. They may not even be able to wait another three years. Yeah. that are not true, I expect. But that, because that seems to be a theme with them. They've been saying that their fish are a good alternative, that they're healthy to eat, that they're saving the wild fish. And that couldn't be more false. That's right, that's right. We've seen the wild fish, they get trapped in these pens.
I don't know what's going to happen in that court, but whatever happens, we cannot quit this fight and we will not quit this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Woo! 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 